Uh, which group are you in? Hon Honorable Waititu. Or you, are, or you are personally? Can we hear you? Let, let, let's first hear FKE, okay. and then Governor uh, Waititu, <laughs> and then, yes. <laughs> FKE, the floor is yours. Um, we will not introduce ourselves. I think everyone now knows us. We think so. But you have exactly 15 minutes. Try and do the best you can in 15 minutes. Thank you very much, honorable co-chairs. It is indeed an honor and a privilege for the Federation of Kenya Employers to appear before you to make presentations on the important issues we are discussing. Let me quickly introduce uh, my team. I have two board members, uh, Mr. Cosmas Nutava and Dr. Rachel Monyoncho to my left. I have senior staff of the Federation, Mr. Stephen Obiro, the head of advocacy, consulting and partnerships, Mr. Samson Mwangi, heading finance and procurement, and Jeffrey Maumo, our PR and communications. First, we want to thank the committee for inviting us to make presentations on pertinent issues facing our country. The Federation of Kenya Employers supports constitutionalism as provided for in our constitution that reflects the desire for fair, democratic, and inclusive approaches to governance. We share the national aspirations of peace, unity, and prosperity for all based on shared values. Due to the shortage of time, we will focus our presentation mainly on the area of the outstanding constitutional matters, specifically on the cost of living and the implementation of the two-thirds gender rule, co-chairs. Uh, Madam, Madam uh, Mugo, is it Mugo? Yes, oh, yes, my name is Jacqueline Mugo. Yes, you only have 15 minutes. Yes. And I would suggest we just uh, give a highlight. This document is very well written. I will give the highlights. Yes. Thank you very much for your counsel. We have in our document said who FKE is. I just want to highlight the fact that we play a very strong representation and advocacy role, not just at the tripartite level in this country, but we also represent employers internationally and regionally. Tripartism is therefore very important for the functioning of the labor market. It helps us to promote industrial peace and harmony at the workplace, and we want to appeal to the committee to support the strengthening of tripartism in this country. We have seen a tendency at various times, not just for this administration, but even in the past, to weaken tripartism and uh, to remove employers from critical boards and institutions when we take positions that perhaps are against what is being proposed. We want to say that the Federation believes in good governance and we support the governance, the government of the day because we are apolitical. And the positions we take are really helped at a, aimed at advancing the national plans that we envisage as a country. And right now, there are very many of those plans and I'll be talking about them. Our overall objective is really to have a conducive environment for doing business. This promotes enterprise sustainability. It creates decent jobs for our people and improves the lives of Kenyans. On the current cost of living and related issues, we want to say that the business environment is very challenging for employers. We are experiencing increased cost of doing business in our country, fueled by the additional levies and taxes that have been introduced. There are international factors, such as the weakening of the Kenya shilling, but we believe that there is a lot that we can do as a nation to address the cost of living uh, so that we can stabilize the economy. Because it is really testing the capacity of employers to keep people in jobs. We are calling for responsible management of the economy in the labor sector specifically. And we believe that stability and predictability in the regulatory and policy framework helps um, to help us keep people in jobs and also for the proper functioning of the labor market. We have been discussing as a country issues of wage adjustments. There is a great push 
my employees currently for understandable reasons for an increase in their salaries. But we believe as employers that these salary and wage adjustments should be linked to productivity and the performance of the economy. Wages are sensitive and are fixed costs to enterprises and the adjustments should look at both the interest of the employee and the interest of the enterprise so that both can survive. We are aware that our counterpart trade unions called for a general wage increase. But we want to highlight there that, that there are very clear parameters for wage determination and that wages consistently... Uh, Honorable Hassan Omar, you are becoming a destructive uh, participant of the meeting. Please uh, allow the meeting to go on. Chair, I hope that earns me two more minutes. Wages in this country are adjusted through collective bargaining, but statutory minimum wages are the ones that are guided by what we call the wage guidelines, and we have various wages councils that do not function in this country because they're not financed. We need, as a country, to invest in these labor sector bodies to be able to play their role to address both the workers' concerns and the employers' concerns, to have wages divorced from political decisions and to have wage determination at advised and informed by the indicators of wage determination which are entrenched in our laws. And part of the reason why workers are pushing for a wage increase and enterprises are crying that they cannot do business is because of the tax regime that I think this committee has heard a lot about. But that tax regime is uh, very, very difficult for employers to cope with. There have been very many taxes introduced by the Finance Act 2023 coupled with the high electricity tariffs, the tight monetary policy, have all colluded to slow down consumption, which is the main driver of domestic demand in Kenya. We appeal that whenever reforms are being introduced, it should be done in a way that is phased out so that we have win-win outcomes for every segment of the population, including enterprises. Reforms, no matter how desirable and appealing, should never lead to the unintended consequence of closure of enterprises, which we are seeing increasingly as FKE. We are seeing loss of livelihoods, loss of jobs, destruction of wealth, and increase in poverty in the country. Added to that is a very high level of mental health issues that we are seeing in the private sector, because to put it simply, Kenyans are stressed and so are businesses. So our appeal is that these reforms be phased out, be well-timed, so as to mitigate the adverse consequences that they have. Our policymakers should have a heart and care to listen to the plight of the affected persons, whether they are natural persons or corporate persons, to alleviate the suffering of Kenyans. We have some proposals on how we can spur the economy and to reduce the cost of living and accelerate the pace of development. I will not go through all of them, but the first one is really value addition uh, to our products, boosting productivity and facilitating business development through enhanced and simplified access to finance and also enhancing the efficiency and provision of services in the public service. Chair, let me now talk about the implementation of, of the two-thirds gender rule. We do support, as a federation, the call for the realization of the two-thirds gender rule, and we appeal that this process be expedited. We believe that this is the right thing for our country to do. It is a reasonable thing. We think as FKE that really what uh, we suffer from in Kenya is not a lack of suitable qualified men and women for these positions, but the goodwill to do it. And uh, in terms of going forward, there should be commitment, not just rhetoric, and affirmative action to ensure the attainment of this two-thirds gender rule. We as a country need to be deliberate and create an environment that supports the underrepresented gender to, be, to get more seats. For example, for elective positions, parties in Kenya should field qualified persons from underrepresented groups in areas that are their strongholds. And for appointment to positions, public positions and private sector, we should seek to have gender balance at all levels of governance. There has been a lot of talk about if the leader is a male, for example, governor, then the female should be, then the deputy should be female and vice versa. 
I believe uh, there have been very many proposals there that we can consider. We just want to assert that FKE supports that move. As I conclude, I want to say that the outcome of the work of this National Dialogue Committee is eagerly, eagerly awaited for by all Kenyans and employers. We as employers hope that the outcomes will help promote unity in the country, including in workplace relations, which are currently in tatters because of the stresses that both sides are facing, and also to drive the general development in the country. Our appeal, though, is that any reforms that come from this committee should not lead to additional taxes and levies for either businesses or for employees, because we cannot be stretched beyond what we are already being stretched to. We think that any proposals that come from here should be funded from the consolidated fund. Employers also appeal to the government to provide a stable and less costly business environment to support our people to stay in jobs and our enterprises to thrive and be able to expand and absorb more people because we know that unemployment is a huge challenge facing this country. Kenya is currently grappling with a high cost of living which threatens our social fabric. We are facing a challenge of shrinking disposable income and increasing prices. This is impacting negatively on the quality of life of our people. And the working population is increasingly getting into a situation where they can hardly afford to meet the basic needs of health, education, food, and shelter, and in fact, to run their households. You must be aware as a committee, because you're very well informed, that today we woke up to the shocking news that Kenya is the worst performing stock exchange in the world. How did we get to that position? We appeal to the executive and parliament to address this matter by involving all stakeholders in the process of developing policies and laws that reduce poverty, enhance economic growth, and promote competitiveness, and create a favorable business environment. This is the only way that employers can continue to meet the payroll costs that they want to meet, because we know in Kenya that if one person is in employment, then they're supporting a whole host of other people, and we cannot afford to see any more job losses thank you. or the collapse thank of you. enterprises. I thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I want us members to allow them to leave, if you don't mind, but I can see one of the uh, yes. uh, th th Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Jacqueline Mugu and your team. First of all, I want to thank you for being the voice of employers and for coming personally. Uh, you and uh, Francis Atuoli have been the voice of the employers and the workers of this country. We expected him to come with his team, of course, he did not. That's why we appreciate you leading this team, because uh, one of the biggest issues before us is the cost of living. And we've had uh, several presentations before us showing uh, how much uh, taxation has increased prices have increased, but disposable income have decreased. And the uh, quality of life for many Kenyans has worsened to the level that there are very many Kenyans who have gone uh, to depression. We were given a very scary uh, uh, figure that between uh, this year and uh, the last two years, you are talking of 84% increment in terms of uh, uh, workers who are really, really depressed. So we wanted, apart from you saying uh, that uh, uh, policies need to be reviewed, we're really looking at the taxes, and particularly what has had the highest impact is the increase of the VAT from eight percent to I mean from eight to sixteen percent on fuel. That has seen the cost of fuel go very high, and when you look at that. In terms of uh, the, the, the taxes, the levies, you are looking at almost 16 of them. would like you to, maybe in your further written submission, to give us specific suggestions because we need to make recommendations as we're asking for those taxes to be reviewed, which ones should be probably dropped. And uh, on electricity also, uh, that has really gone up by 63%. Of course, that affects the cost of production. And uh, 
uh, want you to also look at that and be specific. It will be very helpful for, for this committee to make very specific uh, suggestions to lower the cost of living. Thank you. As you hear in your further written submissions, so that don't, don't take many more time, but you made some very scary statement here that perhaps you need to, 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 con to clarify that Kenya has become the worst performing stock market in the world. You may need to elaborate on that within one minute. When did this happen? Yeah. We have the, the article which we can forward to the Secretariat. It was in the international news, and we can forward it. We're just as shocked about it as you are. But that, that is the case. And uh, I think what we must ask ourselves is how did we get there? And what impact, therefore, does it have on the, on the functioning of the economy? This is does the, that point to a collapse, possible collapse of the economy? The Bloomberg, the Bloomberg uh, report. There's, there's a report Are you hearing me? I, 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 I think you can uh, forward it together with your further yeah, submissions yeah. so, yes, so that we will. consider. Because there's a Nigerian who was saying you can't manage uh, the economy through propaganda. And one way of seeing is really the stock exchange and the dollar yes. rate. Maybe that's a very worrying sign of, uh, yeah. of the times. I think Bloomberg is a very reputable um, um, report. I wanted to say, even as we send our further memorandum, one trend that we've seen in the recent past chair is that taxes are being levied on consolidated pay away from the tradition of basing statutory deductions on the employee's payroll on basic pay. Now, that alone has had major impacts on the take-home pay of employees because you're taxing employees on allowances for transport, for DSA, and for leave. So it means that the employee has to dig from his pocket or the employer has to top up to be able to survive in Kitale or reach or wherever they go. I think that alone would have major impacts because we need to focus tax reductions on the basic pay, even as we look at the raft of taxes which we are going to address, as Honorable Wamalu has advised us. Thank you. Uh, because that Thank is you. what has actually thrown the level of taxation to unprecedented levels. And we're seeing employees taking home less than the one third salary they're supposed to have. Thank you, what are uh, they supposed Madam Mugo. We shall now excuse you. And I sound like a trade unionist. But I'm not, because even for enterprises, it's very difficult. I can see you are clearly agitated by the state of the economy and the general decline of the living standards because of, the, any of your employees. Because any is thrown on the enterprise. So yes. we are bearing a lot of burden, which yeah. uh, perhaps we need to be uh, supported in. Thank you. So in your view, the policies are not working? They're not working. At all? They were not at all, but the, the climate in which business is being done today yeah. is very difficult. And okay. you cannot, as a country, throw 20 new taxes on businesses at the same time. We need to face them out and have conversations with the stakeholders, employers, workers, and everybody else about how can we achieve the dream we have for universal care, for affordable housing, and all this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm told the Kenya Human Rights Commission is in the room. Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. Kindly but while they come, we had uh, Governor Waitito, and you know you are not on the list. Just so come forward and wave. Governor we, we are trying to figure out it. how to handle you. Because you you, 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 you've just come without notice. People are coming by invitation. Maybe we give you five minutes, uh, Governor Waititu.